in the God, God, the gospel according to Luke, how our Lord Jesus entered to Jerusalem. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached the village in Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter, you will find a cold tie there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it to it, bring it here. If anyone asks why you were untying it, say the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the cold, the owners asked them, Why are you, why are you untying the cold? They replied, The Lord the they brought it to Jesus and threw, and threw the, their cloaks on the coal and put Jesus on it. As they went along, the people spread their cloaks on the road. When they came near the place where the road goes down the mount, down the mount on it, the whole crowd of the disciples being joyful to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell them, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. The Lord to the Son of Amen. Amen. Blessed is he who will come in the name of the Lord. If there are kids, they can go to the back and they're going to do a little Palm Sunday parade with the palms. So the rest of you can get your palms out and wave them as we sing this song.
Amen. Would you join me in the opening prayer, please? Almighty God, on this day your Son, Jesus Christ, entered the holy city of Jerusalem and was proclaimed king by those who spread their garments and palm branches along his way. Let those branches be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our Lord and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. In his name we pray. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of every good and perfect gift, we give thanks to you for all the gifts that you have given to us. In praise and thanksgiving, we offer these gifts back to you. Bless the givers and the gifts and those who have none to give. Use our gifts and us to do your work in the world, to spread your gospel throughout the earth, and to bring glory to your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, good morning, officially. Good morning. Uh, you'll notice we've constructed the service a little bit differently uh, this morning, because uh, it is Palm Sunday. You've all figured that out already. Uh, so I want to make just a couple of announcements and then introduce you to the rest of the service. Uh, so Holy Week, welcome to Holy Week. A uh, busy week around the church. I uh, do want to lift up our activities. Uh, we do have our Christ the Passover presentation tonight at 6 o'clock here in the sanctuary. I do want to address any confusion. I don't know why anybody got this idea, but we, we are not eating a meal tonight. We are, we, are, we are watching a demonstration, so uh, eat before you come or eat after you leave, but, but we won't feed you here. So I guess it's important that you know that if you thought that. Um, but but please come. It is a it is a outstanding and informative and inspiring presentation. I know you'll enjoy it. I've seen it before some years ago. Um, then this week we have a uh, Holy Thursday service on Thursday at seven o'clock, and then a Good Friday service on Friday at seven o'clock in the evening. Uh, and then Easter Sunday we have our our regular worship services. Uh, there will also be a breakfast served from 8 to 10, courtesy of the Hospitality and Outreach Committee. If you'd like to help, you can contact Judy Lokenvitz. Uh, her contact information is there in the bulletin. And finally, I uh, do want to remind you that this is the last day uh, to make donations to the Child Protection Center in lieu of Lilies. Uh, that information is there in your bulletin. Uh, we will have a few lilies up here for decoration, but we're not uh, we're not going to have 30, 40 lilies up here uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, there is a better way for us to use that money in helping the Child Protection Center. And number two, I'm allergic to the Easter lilies, so unless somebody wants to preach the Easter Sunday service, um, yeah, we need to keep that to a, to, to, to a minimum. Um, and so uh, that's all the announcements I'm going to make. Uh, today's service uh, is known as Palm Passion Sunday. It celebrates the triumphal entrance of, Jeru uh, of Jesus into Jerusalem, which we've already heard and celebrated. And then uh, the service today uh, takes a stark shift uh, into uh, the commemoration of uh, Jesus' suffering. As we prepare for Holy Week, it's, it's, it, it, it's meant to be a stark shift um, so that it kind of puts us in that kind of, of mood of remembrance as we go into Holy Week. Uh, there is no sermon today, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> um, but but we, uh, we will have a dramatic reading of the Passion narrative. Um, I've asked some readers to help us with some parts, and I invite them to come forward now and take their places. Um, and there's a part, there are parts for you in the congregation as well. Um, and you'll find those in your bulletin, bolded, uh, which means you have to follow along. They'll also be up on the screen notated for you too. I do want to apologize in advance. There is a part in what's put in your bulletin where verses got transposed toward the end in, in, in my part of the reading. I have those corrected on my copy, but, but you'll wonder where I am. So. Uh, know that, and uh, we're going to take a moment uh, of silence to still our hearts and, and focus our minds as we prepare for this Passion reading. Hear now the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. 
the whole assembly rose and led him off to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, So Pilate asked Jesus, Are you a Jew? You have said so. Jesus replied. Then Pilate announced to the chief priests in the crowd, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they insisted. He stirred up the people all over to Jesus by his teaching. He started in Galilee and has come all the way here. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. When he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased, because for a long time he had been wanting to see him. For, for what, from what he had heard about him, he hoped to see him perform some sort of, a sign of some sort. He plied him with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there, vehemently accusing him. Then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him, dressed him in an elegant robe, and, sent, and they sent him back to Pilate. That day, Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, I have examined him in our presence and have found no basis for your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and then release him. But the whole crowd shouted, Away with this man, release Barabbas to us. Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city and for murder. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again. But they kept shouting, For the third time he spoke to them, Why? What crime has this man committed? I have found him no grounds for the penalty of death. Therefore I will have him punished and then release him. But with loud shouts they insistently demanded that he be crucified, and their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demand. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, the one they asked for, and surrendered Jesus to their will. As the soldiers led him away, they seized Simon of Cyrene, who was on his way into the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and waited for him and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, Save the others, let him save himself, who is God's son, the children of The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Are true the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. 
Don't you fear God, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, oh sorry, sorry. Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two, and Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. Now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man who had not consented to their decision and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea, and he himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb cut in the rock, one in which no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how the body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. Almighty God, almost 2,000 years later, and this story still moves us, and yet we don't understand. We don't understand how much you loved us, what love was demonstrated in the sacrifice of your Son, his life, his death, his resurrection. It's so easy for us to to gloss over, to rehearse again, but not really appreciate, not really place ourselves into the story emotionally. So God, today, today let us, let us experience this story of new and fresh in all of its horror, in all of its sadness, in all of its grief. God, that we might fully appreciate it, and furthermore, that we might more fully and deeply and joyfully celebrate the resurrection that we know is yet coming. God, we pray for our church. We pray that you bless us and help us to grow and prosper. Help us to worship and serve you in spirit and in truth and serve the world in your name. God, help us to spread this good news of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to the world around us. We pray for the whole body of Christ around the world. We pray for those who are still suffering for their faith. We pray for the United Methodist Church. We pray for this annual conference and our Bishop Lori, her continued recovery. 
and for Bishop Kesey as she is filling in. We pray for our district and our superintendent, Doug. We pray for our community, our nation, our world in these troubled times. God, we pray for all the people and places who are in need throughout the world today, all those that are sick, all those that are suffering. We pray for men and women who serve us at home and abroad, for our military and for our veterans, for our law enforcement and our first responders, for our missionaries and our relief workers, for our health care workers throughout the world. God, we pray for our world leaders at every level, for our government, our economy, and our environment. And today, especially, we continue to pray for the people of Ukraine. God, that needs will be met, that people will be protected, and peace will be restored. And God, we pray that you hear the prayers of each and every part each and every person who is worshiping with us today, either here in the sanctuary at home, as we lift up our prayers to you, either silently or aloud, saying, in Jesus' name, Amen. Loving God, you've heard our prayers here this morning, and you hear the prayers that remain silent upon our hearts. Oh God, you know our every need, and when we do not know how to pray, your spirit intercedes for us with groanings that are too deep for words. And God, we pray that you hear us now as we lift up our voices together in the prayer which our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. And now I invite you to stand as we join together in professing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Close the door. One of the cross.
Receive this benediction. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, and may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go with you now and remain with you always. Let us go into the world to make disciples of Jesus Christ. Experiencing grace, exploring truth, expressing love. Amen. Amen.